Hello, my name is David Peggy and I work here in the Scientific Department at the National Gallery, London. I'm an analytical chemist and investigate the materials used in these remarkable paintings around us. I investigate materials such as the varnishes, the paint binders and some of the pigments. My name is Gabriella McCarr and I also work here at the National Gallery in London in the Scientific Department. I examine the layer structure of paintings and I also identify and analyse pigments. Researching the materials of the paintings and the techniques of the artists helps the conservators with the care and the treatment of the collection. It also helps the curators to build up a knowledge of the different artists' painting practices. This is a 15th century German portrait of Alexander Murnau and he's identified by the letter that he's holding. We don't actually know the artist that painted this picture over 500 years ago and that's why he's been named the master of the Murnau portrait. When the painting was first acquired by the gallery in the early 1990s, it looked very different to how it looks now. The background was painted blue and the tall hat was much smaller and fitted close to the man's head. But how did we know that this painting had once looked very different? And why were we so confident that it wasn't simply the artist changing his mind about the colour of the background at a later stage? The answer lies in the careful examination of the painting and the chemical investigation of the materials which along with art historical research enabled the conservator to carefully transform this painting to its present state. This is a particularly striking example but the techniques that you'll hear about are used every day to investigate the paintings here at the National Gallery. When conservators and scientists were looking at the portrait for the first time close up, they noticed that the blue paint in the background was not consistent with a 500 year old paint. Having seen that there was something not quite right, we needed to look at the layer structure of the painting and see what might be below the blue painted background. We can do this by taking minute samples of paint from the picture and making a cross section to show the layer structure. This is done by mounting the paint sample, smaller than a grain of salt, in a resin block and grinding sideways into it to reveal the cross section. This image here shows a cross section from the blue background just above the man's hat. It shows the preparation layer, then a thick layer of purple paint which is made of a red and blue pigment mixture. This paint is the original hat. It's clear from this that the blue background was painted over the top of the hat. The optical properties of the two blue pigments suggest that they're from different periods of time. In order to check what the two blue pigments are, we can analyse the individual particles. The technique we are going to use is scanning electron microscopy together with energy dispersive X-ray analysis, known as SEM-EDX. This can provide us with information relating to the elements present. This is useful for pigment identification. With the SEM instrument, we can look at the cross-section at a magnification of up to 100,000 times. An electron beam is focused on the sample, which shows us the surface and 3D structure in great detail. As there is no visible light with a scanning electron microscope, there's no colour in the image. The image is related to the atomic number of the element. The greater the number, the brighter it will be. With this image, we can analyse the sample using EDX. Many pigments can be identified if we know what elements are present. For example, if we analyse the blue of the original deep purple hat, the EDX shows copper is present, confirming the presence of azurite, which is a basic copper carbonate. Prussian blue contains iron, so we would expect to see small peaks for iron if the blue pigment is Prussian blue, which was only invented in the early 18th century, around 300 years after the portrait was painted. This is almost certain evidence that the blue background was added centuries later. So SEM-EDX tells us about the elements present. However, there's an additional technique we can use that will tell us further information on the molecular structure. Information on the molecular structure of the blue pigment can be provided by an instrumental technique known as Fourier Transform Infrared Spectroscopy, or FTIR for short. This band is the molecular signature for Prussian blue confirming its presence. So having discovered that the blue background had actually been painted at a much later stage, it was decided that the colour and composition of the original should be restored. Conservators here at the National Gallery were able to carefully remove the blue paint, revealing the original brown background and a taller hat. But the question still remains as to why someone in the 18th century changed the colour of the background and the shape of the hat. The answer to this lies in another room in the gallery. Hans Holbein the Younger is a very famous artist who was painting in the early 16th century. 
He painted some of the most famous kings and queens, including Henry VIII. This painting of Christina of Denmark by Holbein clearly shows his use of a blue background. The difference between Holbein's background on this painting and the blue background on the Mourner portrait is that this painting uses the historic pigment azurite. In the 18th century, when the Mornau portrait was radically altered, Holbein would have been a very popular painter amongst art collectors. It's therefore believed that the 15th century portrait was changed to look more like a portrait by Holbein. This would have made it a far more valuable work of art. I enjoy using my chemistry knowledge to investigate the materials of the paintings as it supports conservation treatments and enhances our understanding of the collection. It's really great to work in such an interdisciplinary job where I can use my knowledge of chemistry and scientific techniques together with my training in history of art and paintings conservation.